Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week um, I'm doing some drawing or sketching if you like. I'm doing some drawing of people. The materials I'm using are very simple. You can see most of them on screen. It's just a, a charcoal pencil, some paper. There's also a pencil sharpener. So that's it, three things. Um, I'll be doing three different drawings in this video. Each drawing is on a different type of paper. Uh, it's just, I just wanted to do that to emphasize that you can use different types of paper. I encourage people to experiment. There's no one type of paper that's perfect for charcoal or graphite or ink, whatever uh, media you prefer to use. So the different types of paper will produce different final results. They'll all look a little bit different, but it's not that one's better than the other. It's just they're different. So I, I say, I definitely encourage, my advice would be experiment, try different things, find out what you like to work with. The three types of paper, um, the first two are just sketchbooks. Um, the first one is, as you can see, a toned paper, slightly tan, brownish paper. The second one is just a plain white paper. Um, and then the third one, is a little bit different. It's a recycled newsprint paper. Now, if you go onto YouTube and you type in something like um, daily drawing practice, daily sketching practice, you get a lot of videos coming back. And a lot of those videos will emphasize the importance of giving yourself a little bit of time every day as an artist, just to practice drawing and sketching. I guess I agree that it's important, although I guess it depends what type of artist you are. Um, if you're doing printmaking, I don't know how important drawing is in printmaking. I, I've never tried printmaking. If you're doing installation art or performance art, that type of thing. Again, I'm not sure daily drawing practice is really that important for you, but certainly for those of us working on sort of 2D art. so on canvas, on paper, that type of thing. I think a daily drawing practice is definitely a good, a good thing to do, a good habit to get into. However, the reasons I would say it's a good thing may be different from what other people say, because we all have different ideas about what art is and what artists do. Um, there are a lot of people who think that there's just one definition of art. There isn't. There are art is a very amorphous idea. It's not set in stone. Uh, it's not it's not easy to explain exactly what art is because it can mean different things to different people. For some people, probably the majority, this is maybe the mainstream view of art, is it's a craft. It's a technical process. And therefore the daily practice for those people is developing the necessary skills to master their craft. So things like line quality, perspective, proportions, um, shading, values, cross hatching, all of those sort of things that you might use with graphite, charcoal, ink, and so on. And that's one way of looking at it. It's not the way that I look at it because I have a different idea of what art is. To me, art is about developing your imagination, your creativity, um, learning to express your uniqueness and being comfortable with your uniqueness, if you like. That to me is what art is. That's what an artist does. So one if you like practical differences, I don't use any references. This, all of this is coming out of my head. It's, these are not, if you like, real people, they're imaginary people. Um, using references is, when you use a reference, you're sort of, the temptation is to copy. So you look at the reference and you think, well, okay, there's a shape that comes down here and then it sort of goes off that way to the right a bit. And then this bit comes in. That's the way you start to think when you're, 
when you're coping, when you're using a reference. When you throw the references away, when you're just depending entirely on your imagination, all of those things disappear. And instead, you are just focusing on your imagination. You're giving yourself a bit of time to practice taking ideas in your head and putting them down onto paper. And that it does, it is a skill, it does require practice. Drawing from imagination, some people look down on it as being inferior to copying. Drawing from imagination is, it is a skill. It does take practice. And you have to build up your confidence to be able to do it. Um, so that for me is the emphasis in this daily practice. It's just 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, but it is learning to be creative, learning to use my imagination. As I say, because that's how I see art. So I'm not saying my way of thinking is the right way. I'm not saying that the other people who focus on the technical craft aspects of art, I'm not saying they're right. It's just different. We all have our own way of looking at life and, and things in life. So maybe in this video, if there's a main point, it's, you know, keep an open mind about these things. There isn't just one way of looking at art. And if the craft, if the technical aspects of art is leaving you a little bit cold, it, it's not really doing it for you. There, there are alternative ways of looking at art. Maybe, you know, try the building up your imagination and your creativity. It's another way of doing art. You will get people criticizing you because, you know, they'll say things, oh, well, your proportions aren't right. Um, and I say they, for them, that's very important. But I wouldn't worry about that because that's just their way of looking at art. And it's not, it's not the, I'm going to say it's not the correct way. It's not the only way of looking at art. There is no one correct way of thinking about art. So if your proportions aren't perfect, if your line quality is a little bit unusual, so what? It, it's you, it's, that's your art. Um, and that's you expressing yourself, your uniqueness. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, so these are scans of the three drawings or sketches if you like it's we get back this idea drawing what's the difference drawing and sketching it all comes back to this sort of technical way of looking at art drawing is much more serious and sketching is uh, loose and not as good again i don't make that distinction so sometimes i say drawing sometimes i say sketching but anyway three final drawings and I say three different types of paper. And I think you can see the different paper surfaces to some extent on your screen, maybe. Um, the one on the left is the toned paper, the first one. The one in the middle is just the white, plain white sketchbook. And then the one on the, the right is the recycled newsprint paper, which is maybe the most challenging, the most interesting one to work with. Uh, newsprint is very thin, it's very th uh, flimsy, it buckles very easily. You can get all kinds of imperfections and folds in it and it creates different effects sometimes. So if you look at the drawing on the right, there's a sort of a line across the middle of the three, four figures. It's not a line that I put in, it's just because of an imperfection in the, the surface of the paper. Newsprint is far from perfect but as i say working with charcoal it's an interesting surface to work on and if you can get past all the imperfections and things it, it can produce interesting results ironically although it's the lowest quality paper it's actually not the cheapest paper printer paper is usually much cheaper than newsprint i think it's because the newsprint is made for artists and therefore it has that sort of little bit of extra um, value added to it or something, it tends to be more expensive. 
more expensive than I think it needs to be. The other thing about newsprint is, although it's manufactured and marketed at artists, it's actually not artist quality. It's not museum quality. It's not archival paper. So you know yourself, if you have old newspapers, after a while, they'll start to turn yellow. They'll start to break apart and things. Newsprint, same thing will happen. It's not an acid free um, paper. Okay, well, if you made it this far in the video, uh, thank you for watching and listening and hopefully see you in next week's video.